Welcome to Colorful Peacocks, and um, happy Halloween to everybody. Just trying to get all my uh, Halloween candies ready before trick-or-treating. And today, I got a special project that's been way overdue for a big-time procrastinator such as me. I've been wanting to maintain my FX6 filter uh, since sometime last year. As you can see, September 15th, 2000. 22 is the last time that the filter has been maintained and uh, about uh, a little bit more than a year after that i've been meaning to do a video on um main maintaining and cleaning it however life gotten in the way and i never gotten to it so i apologize about that it's been way overdue however the good news is i've finally done it today so i'm going to show you from beginning to the end so stay tuned now which one of you bad boys did this digging up valleys exposing my crate underneath the rock the crate is totally visible in there now it dug out all the sand and piled them on top next door making mountains out of them certainly wouldn't be this little bristle nose plego would it it's too small to do that i suspect it might be one of these ruby reds that's uh in the background there maybe this guy maybe another guy whichever is the uh tank boss just trying to uh build a crib for himself and for him to hide under and um develop his uh, dominance. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to try to get this thing out of here once again. As you can see, it hasn't been cleaned since September 15th, 2022. Because this thing is so heavy, I'm going to have to empty out some water into this bag before it'll be uh, light enough for me to pull it out. <clears throat> so in order for me to do that, I'm gonna have to first unplug it. Oh. Yeah, I'm gonna have to shut off. Um, go to the in and outs. So we don't end up drinking the water from the tank. I only wanna drink <clears throat> the water from FS6 down to about 50% before I pull it out. The output side, as you can see here, the danger in that is that <coughs> as of now, <coughs> my my two out, outlets on the output side is up there, as you can see, or maybe you can't. Um, it's actually below the surface of the water by a couple of inches. So if I don't shut this off, there's a chance for for the water pressure to back at, back in, back in into into the filter from the output side. I don't know logically that doesn't make sense, but it's because of the water pressure, <clears throat> so it makes sense. Now, <clears throat> as you can see, over here by the motor, the FX6 has its built-in drain outlet. comes with a drain pipe. I have to first remove this rubber cover. It's just a cover. Water doesn't won't come out until you open you open this valve. But before that, I need to connect the hose. Every FS6 comes with a strain hose. It's not that long, it's only I don't know what this is. Like five foot that yeah this this much length of tubing in fact I have this tub over here this tub over here that I could drain water into as well make sure the open end of the tube goes into the bucket where I'm intending the water to go and because this tubing is so short as you can see depending on which which way you angle the hose this output and might jump out of the bucket. 
That's one thing I've learned that uh, I need to watch out for. They sell these uh, years ago on some of my siphon hoses. They sell some of these clamps. It's like a, it's like a plastic clamp that you're able to clamp, fix these holes against the side of your bucket so someone you know won't jump out of you. But for now, uh, instead of running downstairs to get that clamp, I'm just gonna hold it with my hand. So here's how you, how you drain it. Okay, push this end in and tighten it up with the screw cap. Well, I don't know how you hold that. So, as of now, so I, in my right hand, I just hold the hose against the bucket. And then it's out of the frame of the shot. And then I go and open up the, uh, the drain. Water is having a hard time coming out because my open end is higher than the level of the output. So I have to tilt, I have to tilt my holes down a little bit. And also, because I shut off both of these outlets, both the inlet and outlet, it's technically a vacuum that's being held inside. You're gonna want to introduce some some air into the bucket, so it'll help. That'll allow the gravity to suck the water out of the, the bucket. As of now, even if you can get some of the water to come out because of the lack of air pressure inside the vacuum chamber, uh, water is not coming out easily. So what I've been doing is go ahead and um, actually at this point you could go ahead and like disengage one of these these valves, and that that'll let the air go in really quick, or you can start undoing these these knobs. There's a total of eight of them on this FX6. I mean, I've watched some videos of people. They normally never go, they never go over these details. I don't know. Maybe this isn't the smartest thing that I'm doing, and if that's the case. Please let me know. And just be, just uh, before I start getting a major flood in my living room, it it's always helps to have towels handy. So let me just go grab that. I used to have a bigger. Bath towels, I'm sore, I don't know where it went. Just hang up. There it goes. As soon as I broke the vacuum, I would think it lit up a little bit, water started coming out. There it goes. I just opened it up completely. I mean, not completely, I mean, opened it up a lot, and that enabled the water to come out. See, it's flowing freely. Even though the out the uh, opposite end of this hose is technically higher than this end, but because this amount of water is level is higher than the amount of water in, in my bucket, it's gonna drain and lower itself until both water levels are equalized. At this point. Still holding the hose with my hand, which is kind of a pain. Um, I can slowly try to remove this. Well, I can't because I don't have enough room above the cabinet. So I might have to wait till this whole thing becomes light enough so I can pull it out and put it on the floor. So this usually takes a few minutes. It's still too heavy for me to lift. My bucket is, right now, my five gallon bucket is about uh, halfway filled. The water flow is slowing down because I wanna make sure my lid stays open so I don't trap the air in again. It's slowing down because uh, the water level is being equalized on both sides. It'll help if I actually drain it into this uh, 
this other lower bucket. Well, I kind of don't want to have to mess with it because I got all this junk. As you can see, I'm a pretty lazy guy. I haven't cleaned this in over two years. <laughs> so, okay, drink to this thing. This fuck we I'll get totally lower than the level of the FX6. I could pretty much get all of the water out of it if I wanted to. As you can see the FX6 is becoming lighter. But uh, make sure the level of the hose also stays lower so gravity can air pressure or, or water pressure because water has been drained out so low already it's not enough pressure to empty the remaining amount of water out that's pretty much all you're gonna get that's when I shut this valve off and before you let go totally of this hose what I do is I uh, try to get rid of much water out as possible and this this open end is becoming loose on me and therefore I grab it like this immediately lift it upwards otherwise it's gonna drain onto your floor you see ask me how I knew about that because I've obviously flooded my stand and my tank multiple times that's never a good thing because whenever you're this particle board stand becomes wet, that's water gets inside it actually weakens the particle wood inside it. Alright, I'm just shoving these water aside. And with this amount of water, I might um, rinse out some of the dirtiest um, filter media inside this bucket. So we'll see. Now we're done with this drain plug cap back on and make sure there's no more water coming out. I've seen reports of where the strain um, valve or connection here will start to leak. I hope that never happens to me, but these kinds of things you never know over the years. Plastic joints or the rubber o-ring inside could become weakened. So it might be worthwhile to keep a couple of backups on hand. So I should be able to pull this whole thing out. Now first, let me pull out the power cord. Get the power cord out of the way. Let's see. Yes, it is. So it helps to leave a little bit of extra. All right, so I've detached my hose completely. It was this vertical, um, plastic tubing that's in the way of it. So once this is detached, I just leave it inside the cabinet with a piece of towel underneath it so when the water drip off, water drip off, it won't get on your wood or anything. I mean, technically people could detach these input and output valves, get them out of the way and get the, the lid out, but I'm choosing to do it like this today. I've, I've done it. I've done it before like that too. Like I said, I, I do this every year or two, so I don't have, I don't do it exactly the same every time. Now, so far, I think I've only had to open up this this motor once or twice to clean off the impellers inside. I only do that when I hear like active uh, noises coming out of the impellers. A few months ago, my other FX6 on the right hand side. I started hearing like sharp chattering noises, like grinding noises inside the impeller, like a piece of coral sand or something had gone inside the motor and, you know, come into contact with the impeller as it spins. But uh, miraculously, it, uh, it quieted off, quieted down by itself. And, you know, I still get a water flow out of that filter, although uh, it's not very optimal right now. It, uh, yeah, I probably have to clean my input, um, my pre-filter foam that I have covering the uh, input hose right now. Yeah, normally that'll, that'll solve that flow problem.
Okay, so now my filter bucket unit FX6 is totally detached from my tank. And as you can see, that's what it looks like inside after two years worth of an operation. I, you know, I've got to say, it doesn't really look too nasty, I tell you. I do have a small piece of um, pre filter foam inside my intake cover. What I mean by that is you can't see into the tank right now because of the uh, glare. Here's the intake cover, that's the tubing. I keep a small filter plastic. Yeah, yeah. So I put a piece piece of pre filter foam inside before I cover it up. So some of the larger debris can be stopped by this filter foam, but even still, I, I haven't opened up this. I haven't opened up this the filter filter foam inside the uh, the tank to clean it ever. So I gotta say that uh, I gotta thank to my stock level. I try to keep it uh, less than less than twenty fish, adult fish. Um, I haven't counted it lately. Probably have no more than 15 in there right now, if that. Let me just count quickly. I'm seeing only 10 fish in there right now, so. Yeah, some, over the years, some will, some will die off. Some of the, you know, either die off of uh, old age or they get sick, either that or they get become too weak to defend themselves and they end up getting chased to death or, you know, eaten by the larger fish or the tank boss. That's uh, just the nature of the game, you know? So, let me lift this whole thing out of here. You could pretty much take this whole thing and go to your utility bucket, uh, utility um, sink to do this. The ones on the lower level are gonna be dirtier. this whole thing and put it in One, two, three. that worked out pretty good as you can see there's a lot of sand at the bottom of the bucket I have to clean all that out make sure that all the sand gets out of there and one thing I was worried was uh, trumpet snails. I get a lot of snails all throughout my tanks, especially the my breeding tanks and grout tanks downstairs. And to my surprise, I don't see any so far. Really great news. Okay, let's inspect the different levels of the tray. I, because of the, the way the water flows, my guess is that the, the, lower, the lowest level is gonna have the dirtiest water. So let me remove the top level and just show you this is the top level and I'm going to remove the filter foam. They, they get the dirtiest. Look, that's what they look like. So I'm going to get all that nasty stuff out into the water in my other bucket so I can use them as fertilizer to for my farm dyes and other house plants. This is totally, totally nasty. I mean, if it was cleaner, I could like rinse it out and reuse them. But these these things, they're used for uh, making pillows or stuffed animals or whatnot. They come in a big bag for cheap. So um, I'm just gonna get this gunk into the water as fertilizer, and then I'm gonna replace it with new, with the filter floss. Okay. Place it with new. Let's take a look at the second tray. As you can see, it's got more gunk on the foam. Just because the way the water flows, it comes up from the, the outside, through the outside uh, mechanical foams, up through the top and then goes back down. Therefore, the, the, the dirtiest stuff is gonna get trapped by the lowest, the, the foam on the lowest level. So as you can see, this, this is the, the second level. Jesus, not too bad. These media 
normally um, the advice I like to give is that with any uh, nitrogen cycle relating to the filter, usually these um, biological media, you never really want to rinse it out under tap water because that will destroy any of the beneficial bacteria that's living inside of your biological water. Okay. Ideally, you want to keep it in emerge inside tank water. Matter of fact, let me do that. So that uh, your beneficial bacteria won't die. However, in my setup with this 125 gallon, I have two FF6s, you know, one on each side. I could literally kill off all the bacteria that's that's in the, in this FX6 filter without having an effect on the health of the fish because uh, simply the fact that uh, I'm already over filtering this tank, you know, even without this FX6, I would still have another 50% of filtration at work. Not to say that any of the aquarium decors inside the, the aquarium tank, substrate, there's beneficial bacteria living all throughout the tank, even on the glass and on the back wall there too, inside the algaes, um, inside any of the crevices of the fake rocks and, and on, on the rock surfaces, you know, on the surface of the, the substrate and inside the substrate. So because I have two FX6s, I can get away by totally rinsing out my biological media in, in any one of them at a time without affecting the health of the tank. Okay, so um, this piece, it's it's personal preference. I could technically, because it's not totally clogged. It's clogged like maybe on one on, only on this on this side, because this side is, is uh, denser, it hasn't been clogged up yet. Um, let's see. Oh, and the reason why I put the denser side facing down is due to the water flow because water comes out through the outer chambers and then flows back down through the center ring, flows back down. So that is why all the debris is being, though the gunk is being trapped on the upper side and the lower side is cleaner. And you want the coarser stuff to be up higher and then the denser stuff at the facing down because that's the way the water flows. You want it to hit the coarser media first before the finer media by doing that way you're essentially not only you know trapping and filtering you're, you're doing water polishing as well so yeah it helps to, to put a fine um <clears throat> the finest uh filter floss at the uh, at the lowest level so yeah there's something something that's worthwhile to plan out as you can see the gunk not only is inside the filter but inside the uh the trays on the tray housing as well That's the type of stuff that would benefit any of your house plans that you keep around. So I'm kind of emerging them into my bucket so they come off into that water that I can later on use it for my plants. Okay, finally, the lowest tray. See this lowest tray just as I suspected. It's got the highest amount of gunk. The tritus and you know feed the fish crap. Look at how thick that stuff is. It's it's basically all covered up. I mean all in all, as a procrastinator in my in my uh, actual situation as you can see here, because of my over filtration with two giant two FX sixes, it that's that's it's I'm still getting by even after two years without cleaning this FX6. It's gone on for more than two years and one month. We're in October now. And this filter was last cleaned in September of 2022. That's why this is possible. On another tank on a, another person's tank that are more overstocked than mine. Um and with a higher bio load, this FX6 could have been clogged up in half of the time the time or one one third of the time one may have to open it up every six months to a, a year to clean it so everybody's uh tank set up and bio low are all different 
That is why whenever somebody asks, well, how, how often should you maintain your filter? There's never a there's never a fixed answer or correct answer. It depends on your tank, your stocking, and how often you how often and how much you feed your fish. That's directly correlated to the amount of uh, bio load that your fish puts out and how much media you put inside inside your filters. If you set up your media right, the beneficial bacteria is, is better able to process the the um, detritus most efficiently, then you're not gonna have as much of uh, detritus left over <clears throat> to clog up your filter. So as you can see, I could probably still go another half a year the way this is fine. I'm not sure if it can, it can push to three years, but I'm pretty sure that going on a few months fine without doing the maintenance like I'm doing today. So I'm gonna go to my utility sink to really um, rinse out these dirty filters and whatnot with uh, stronger water. And I'll come back later to uh, reassemble it. Look at how dark this water is. After I just wring out of my uh, mechanical filters to get majority of the, uh, the denser crap or denser detritus out of them, you can see they're not they're not totally clean yet. They're maybe only like seventy five percent clean. I will take all these films. I'll go to my this foam. I mean, I'll go to my driveway and I hit them with uh, like a stronger water hose to get every every bit of it out of it. And um, if I really want to save these nutrients for my plants, I could actually collect another bucket, another bucket of water from this tank because uh, this tank is due for water change. Also, it's it's been like more than six months that I haven't changed the water. I could also get another bucket of water and then bring out these these foam some more into the bucket, and this way I'll have another bucket uh, full of nutrients. And as you can. See, the, the, even though we're headed into winter right now, I have house plants that have bonsais that I keep in these nutrients. Uh, instead of using like chemical fertilizers, I have more. Uh, I have more bonsais upstairs too. I used to have like up to thirty plus bonsais, and I slowly got rid of like ten of them, and I got. I think I got like less than twenty left. So yeah, that's where I use my uh, my fertilized uh, water instead of using chemical fertilizers. Um, these natural ones, they release slower, so therefore it'd be better for the plants. I also got another empty bucket next to there. I'm gonna share it with my mother-in-law. She used it uh, in her garden, even though her garden is like kind of shutting down now. But uh, I don't know what she's gonna use it for, but she'll be happy to take them. Okay, I just squeeze uh, those foams out again into a couple gallons of tank water. I just drain out of the out of the tank up top, and look at how dark the water is. I mean, I could go on like this for buckets upon buckets to get every bit of detritus out of those, but that would, that would take too much time. But I just want to show you how dark the water is for you, even for a second bucket. Got my hose turned on, I put it in this jet setting. some pressure washer nozzle that would have worked even better but I don't know what I did with it now can't find it <laughs> <laughs> 